Hello guys, welcome to GC Revision Tutorials Cairo series. And today we are going to be looking at GC Ordinary Level 2021 Paper 3. So as you can see in front of your screen, you have the question paper. And uh, yeah, candidates are expected to fill the necessary information as stated. So registration center number and so on. So you are advised to follow the instructions very well before filling. If not, you might be penalized for that. So below it, it's the instructions and this question paper runs for two and a half hours. So yeah, there are the instructions. And also you are advised to read these instructions carefully before actually starting the exam. So we move to the second paper. Yeah, we say do all tax, tax one, tax two, tax three in this question paper. So anything that involves writing, you have to fill this question paper. Then anything that involves doing on the machine, then you do on the machine. So take note, it's good you always fill your answers inside this paper because this is what you are still going to submit after that. So tax one it runs and tax one is for 20 marks. You say figure one is a letter typed and enclosed in a text frame. You are your task is to type, exit, and format the text. You are not required to place a border around the text. So as you can see, this is a letter, and uh, these are the borders. This little box enclosed in the letter. OK. Next, once you finish reading the letter, you go, you have a table, table one. Then you have now the activities. Activity says, the first one, state the name of the word processor installed in your computer. So for this exercise, I'll be using Word 2016. So those of you that have 2007, 2010, 2013, 2021, 2020, and so on. So it's not really a big deal. So the word processor I'll be using, I'll be using Microsoft. Microsoft Office Word 2016. Okay, the next is launch the word processor. I simply click on my start. Then I search for word and I launch my word processor. That is, I click on new, then blank document. So I have my word document. So it's good I do a zoom so that what I'll be doing is going to be very, very clear. Okay. The next is set the page orientation to landscape and the page size to A4. So page orientation, landscape, and page size A4. So I come to layout, click on layout. Then I see orientation. So on page setup, you see orientation. I select landscape. Then next to it, I have size. Click on size, then A4. Please, you can always pause this video or slow down the video if you want to actually follow up. Okay, the next instruction says, type the text given in figure one. So you want us to type this text. I always advise students to type this text without actually editing before you can go into formatting, right? So just type the text plain before actually doing the formatting. So you can always pause the video and do your typing. So I can start, it starts by Z, technology, consulting, and I press enter to go to the next line, 12 July. 2001, I press enter, going to the next line. It says payment of outstanding dues. So I can always, okay. When you type your text, you will get something like this. Dues. You get something like this. As you can see, I've not done any formatting, although it doesn't look like 
doesn't look like the text which we we had but that's not a really big deal because most students always take that time you want to do formatting and you spend time on one tax a lot and that's how time will be against you okay i continue the next instruction or the next activity says format the heading of the text as follows font size 18 font name area alignment center case upper case so this is my heading if i want to format the first thing i need to do i'll select the heading then the set font size i go back to home home tab then i look at the numbers which are there this is the font size I select 18, then font name area. So beside it, you have the font name. Then I search for area. So this is area, select area. Then the next is alignment center. So next to it, you have paragraphs. And then I have alignment, left align, right align, justify, and so on. So this is center. I click on center. So now my heading is center. So the next thing is case, uppercase. So uppercase is found in, at font, right? So where I have this change of case, I have capital letter and small letter of E. So I click on it and I select uppercase. So I have my text as uppercase. Okay. That is it about the formatting of this heading so the next is format the rest of the text as follows i have the font size 13 the line spacing 1.5 the alignment full justification font name times new roman so the rest of the text is what i have here this is what i have as the rest of the text so the first is font size 13. So I come back to my font size. I click, oh, I don't have 13 yet. So don't panic. What do I do? I simply type 13 for my keyboard and press enter. So my text now is at font size 13. The next is line spacing 1.5. Line spacing 1.5. What do I do? Please, my text is still highlighted. So I click on this little paragraph settings here at the corner. Then I look for line spacing. So this line spacing. So I simply select this roll down menu and I click or select on 1.5 lines. Then I click OK. So I have my line spacing as 1.5. So the next is alignment justification. So I say come back to my paragraph. This is justify. Click on justify. The next is font name times new Roman. So I click on font name, then I have Times New Roman. So please, it's in alphabetical order in case you don't see it because it's what I usually use all the time. These are the fonts I usually use. So I'll obviously see it there. So in case you don't see it, you can simply come and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll. I look for T. So I scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. So this is T and I have Times New Roman. I select okay that's it about this activity concerning the rest of the text below so next is insert table one before the signature of the director so this is table one right this is table one i have to insert it before the signature of the director so this is the signature here this is the signature Okay, what do I do? I come back to my text. And what you need to take note, the first thing you need to do is to know the actual number of headings, I mean, the actual number of rows and columns you have in this text, in this table, sorry. The rows and columns, so how many rows do I have and how many columns do I have? These are columns and these are rows, horizontally rows and vertically you have columns. So I, I see that I have six rows and six columns. So how do I do? I simply click before the signature, right? So I come to insert, 
and below it I have table. So I click on table. So from here, I can simply select this number of rows and columns directly. So a six by six, and as you can see, it's changing up here and my table is inserting at once. So I look for a six by six, six, five, five. And uh, this is a six by six. Or what can I see do? I can see come to insert in case your table is very, very large. I can come to insert table. Then number of columns, I put six. Number of rows, I put six. Then I click on OK. So I have six rows, six columns. So you can actually um, adjust the size of your table the way you want. So on this table, I have S, N, and it's always advisable to also type, um, to type the text before you actually do your formatting. First name, I have last name, I have gender, I have date. So you can always pause the video and actually finish typing. From here, you can see I have my table which has been typed. I've just roughly typed it and uh, it doesn't actually look like this table here. You see how it is reduced, everything is centered, my headings are centered and things like that. So it's not a problem. So what do I do? I can simply reduce the sizes the way I want or if it looks like the one which I have on my paper. So I can realize that in this, um headings it is actually centered in the middle in the middle of each cell so what do i do i simply highlight all of this and uh, i come to layout above here then from layout i have alignment so i have text alignment and then i align center so as you can see now my text is actually center okay so as i said earlier you can still reduce the size of your table the way you want and as you can see i can as i'm reducing things are adjusting right so it's up to you so what is more important is to do the activity which they ask you to do so i can actually center this my table and resize it the way i i want so Let's see, the next is after inserting the table, add a header, D consulting and footer outstanding payments. So uh, the header, D consulting and footer outstanding payment. So I come to my insert, click on insert. Then here I have headers and footer. So what do I start with? I start with the header. So I click on header. He said they add the header D consulting to so blank. I'll just type the text D consulting D, then consulting D consulting. They have not added any formatting to be done with this. So I'll just close the header and footer. I have my header that's D consulting. Then footer, I come again to insert footer. And I click on blank. So I can either click anyone and then I'll be able to edit the header and the footer at the same time. So the footer should be outstanding payment. So I have that. I close headers and footer. So I have this outstanding payment as header and the consulting, I mean, outstanding payment as footer and consulting as header. So as you can realize on my text, that's my letter. Above it, I have this letter head, which is aligned at the right. So what do I do? I can either highlight all of this. First of all, I bold it as it is. Then I adjust my ruler and take it to the right. 
right? And I have it. So some people can still align right, but if you align right, I don't think it's going to have the same the same format as it is here because see, it's, it's straight, right? So if you align to the right, yeah, it's going to be straight. And you know, as you want to always do things exactly the way it is, to represent it exactly the way it is. So the next is save your work as tax one in the working directory and print a copy. So to save, I simply click on file. You can either click here if you have this little icon, this save little icon, I click on file. Then I click on save. Next, I will browse because it's always good to save on the desktop. If your folder is on the desktop, click on browse. Then I look for desktop, desktop. Then I can create a new folder. Maybe you might have created your folder at the beginning. So I didn't really create mine. I'll create my new folder here. Saying um, Kaolo, let's use the name Kaolo. I go into my folder and this is save your work as tax one. So save as tax one. Then I click on save. So as you can see, my title bar now is saved as tax one. So any changes that you do, make sure you click on save so don't mind as this is underlined underlined everywhere just that the dictionary does not recognize some of these names so guys that's it about tax one and as you can see it's very fast and easy so next we are going to be moving to tax two